everyone, this is Sarah, and welcome to our live video chat. If you'll notice, I've got some spider webs and some cute spiders as our first picture. Isn't it cute? We're going to learn how to make those spider webs in just a little bit, but first we have some other business to attend to. <laughs> Weren't those fun? I can't wait to show you how to make those spider webs. So just so everybody knows, I always do my live video live <laughs> on Facebook, on the Posh Pooch Designs Facebook page, 9.30 a.m. every Tuesday, unless something keeps me from doing it. I woke up with a horrible headache today, but it's not going to stop me, okay? Because I am super caffeinated. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest cup? I love Snoopy. It's one of my favorites. All time cartoons is Snoopy. All right. So we got a couple of fun things to do today. We're going to, like I said, we're going to learn how to make those spider webs that are super fun and you can make them super little and you can keep on going and look at that one behind my head. Isn't that fun? So we're going to learn how to do that. But before we do that, and before we do our unboxing, we need to have everybody clink in. Clink. Okay, so I have to ask the question. Who loves the pumpkin spice coffees and who doesn't? I am one of those people in America, like five of us, that just doesn't care for the pumpkin spice. I don't like pumpkin in anything, actually. And I think it's because I, I'm allergic to cinnamon. Well, it's not really an allergic reaction. It's more of a sensitivity. If I get cinnamon that comes from outside the United States, a lot of times I buy it at um, Sprouts or some of the teas, they don't bother me. But if I buy cinnamon in America that's produced in America, for some reason it really bothers me bad and I have horrible rashes. Well, good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to see you all clinking in. All right, are you ready for our unboxing? This is super fun, and I've never done this in video before, so we'll have to see how it goes, okay? All right, well, a company contacted me, and this is the name of the company. Have any of you ever heard of this before? Ho Hobium. I asked the person um, that, that contacted me, make sure you explain to me how to pronounce your name, because I am horrible with understanding how to pronounce names. And so the name of the company is Hobium, and they sent me a box of yarn. I don't know what's in it yet. My husband peeked in the bottom, and he said he's disappointed because it's in a bag, so he couldn't see it anyway. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> All right, so I went to this company's website, and I am so impressed. They have a lot of just gorgeous, beautiful yarns. And they ship all over the world, by the way. And their prices are very, very reasonable. And it's www.hobium.com. And you can also put in hobiumyarn.com. And the company comes up. And it's su it's a super great company. They have a lot of yarns like what we're used to using um, that are similar. And then they also have a lot of yarns that are unique and different. And I'm looking forward to trying some of those yarns. So I've got my scissors here and we're going to open up this box and let's see what they sent me. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top off. Oops. That's just the label thingy bopper. Let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and open the bottom where my husband did. He's right, it's in a box, I can't see it, or in a bag, I mean, and it's in an, a green bag. Let's see, Ooh. look at that. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, let's look inside and see what I've got in here. <gasps> Beautiful colors, look at this. This is called Jersey, super soft. It looks a lot like our, um, pop yarns doesn't it let me see it's got 200 grams it's 80 acrylic and 20 percent wool that's really nice those are beautiful colors aren't they 
I don't really have anything with purple and brown, so I'm looking forward to coming up with something for that one. All right, here's one that's similar. This looks a lot like the yarn that I used for the dog sweaters, and I'll show you those in a little bit. It's not exactly the same, but it is similar with some of the pinks and the gold. Love that one. And it's also, let's see, this one is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. That's what this one was too. Did I say that right? 80-20. Those are beautiful, aren't they? Oh, I can't wait to make something with those. I'm going to set those down. Those are the jersey yarns. Oh, this is absolutely stunning. Look at this. This is a sparkle. Look at those yarns. Oh, it's like gray and beige. And look, it's got a little tab so you can start it in the middle. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's see. It's called Matris Yos. See, I'm terrible with pronouncing words, but that is gorgeous. Let's see what it's made out of. Let's see, I'm looking it upside down here. No, I wasn't. All right, this looks like it's 90% acrylic, and then it's got that um, sparkle going through it. I'll look at it more later, but look at this. They sent me two. And that just looks like a wrap shawl in the making, doesn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous cake yarn. Oh, I just cannot wait to play with these. So they sent me four cakes. Wow, I'm so excited. And what is this? Oh, look. All you knit is love. Love, Obium. And look here. <laughs> oh, my dear. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I just love that. You can never have too many yarn bags. All righty. And then I've got some stickers and some other things in here. Let's see. Oh, pom-pom makers. Awesome. Pom-pom makers. I love Hobium. Oh, and then also a 15% off coupon. So one thing I want you to do is just run over there and take a look at their yarns. They're just gorgeous and beautiful. And um, I can't wait to play with these. This is going to be so much fun. And I did find, you know, a lot of people that are in like Australia and other places have a hard time finding yarns that are similar to what we have in America. And a lot of these are very similar. And then like that one that I showed you that's got the sparkle. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. I cannot wait to make a wrap shawl out of that. And so if you're looking for yarns and you're not in America and you're looking for yarns that are inexpensive and ship inexpensively, this is the company to go through. And I'll put more information about it on the blog that'll be underneath the video. So go look at it. Oh, that was so much fun. Uh, my husband says every time I go in the Hobby Lobby or other places to look at yarn, I'm like a kid in a candy store. And it's the truth. I really, really am. I got so excited. I got so hot. I'm going to take off my jacket. <laughs> All right. So that was just so much fun. Are you ready to make a spider web? <laughs> All righty. It got warm in here. I got so excited about yarn. All right. I'm going to click down over to the other screen. Um, oops, that's the puppies. I did that again. <laughs> All righty. So here's our spider webs. I'm going to move this yarn out of the way. Oh, I cannot wait to play with that. <laughs> All right. So what we have here are some spider webs. And so to make a little spider web, all you need is just some acrylic or cotton or any kind of yarn of any kind of weight. And so this one is made with thicker yarn and so I made a bigger spider web. These are all made with just worsted weight number four. And what I bought to decorate them with is the coolest thing. These are just those cheapy little rings that look like spiders. And I purchased these at Walgreens while I was waiting for my prescription for 97 cents. And I got a whole bag of them. But you can also find these at the Dollar Tree or, you know, anywhere Halloween decorations are. Walmart. And so what we're going to make today is a spider web. All right. And then I'll show you how I hook those rings on. It's super easy. All right. Now, the one I'm going to make today, 
I'm just going to use some off-white acrylic yarn and I'm going to use my H hook. Now, like I said, you can do any, any, any size yarn that you want. That big one that was hanging behind me is on the Thick and Quick. Um, I think that's uh, Lion Brand's Thick and Quick. And so you can just make sure that your crochet hook matches what they uh, say on the yarn. For instance, you know, most worsted weight probably tell you to use an I, but I'm using an H. <laughs> so you got to kind of play with it and do what you want to do, right? All right, so I lost my paper. I wrote my pattern down. I lost my paper. All right, so let's go ahead and, and make us a spider web. We're going to begin with that slip knot. And we're going to chain six. All right, we're going to join that tail to the loop like that. And then we're going to make that little stay knot that keeps that from coming undone. There we go. And just a hint, when you're making this, if you put your tail on one side and then work around it, it'll, it'll grab that tail of yarn while you're working. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I'm going to pull up my loop. And now I'm going to stitch 12 single crochets right in this loop. One, two, three, and see I'm stitching right over that string. There's six. Seven, eight, whoops, nine, 10, 11, and 12. All right, so now I've got 12 stitched around that chain six, and I'm gonna pull this string and see what happens Let me move my thumb. It closes that hole up. Now, I don't want this hole to be closed completely because that's not the way spider webs are, just a little bit. All right, we're gonna join to the top of that first single crochet with a slip stitch. And now we're going to chain seven chains. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what this is, is the first three chains count as a double crochet. Those next four chains are four chains. We're going to skip the next single crochet, and then in the next single crochet, we're going to stitch a double crochet. And then we're going to chain four. And we'll repeat this all the way around. Skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. And chain four. Skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and chain four. All righty, we'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to chain four, and then we're gonna to join to the third stitch or the third chain of that first chain seven. Because that first one, the first three chains counted as a double crochet, and then we chained four. All right, <clears throat> so that's your first row. And if you'll notice, I've got an extra stitch in here, so I must have somehow skipped a stitch. It's not gonna matter because this is a decoration, but just so that you see, I've, I skipped a stitch in there. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to chain nine. Our first three chains count as a double crochet, and then we have six chains. And now we're going to double crochet in the double crochet.
and chain six. And so now we're going to repeat what we did, <clears throat> but we're going to chain six in between. All right, so double crochet in the double crochet and chain six. And we'll do this all the way around. Now, if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would go ahead and take that out where I skipped that stitch, but I'm just leaving it. You need to understand that I'm not perfect and I make mistakes too. And I don't mind <laughs> that I'm not perfect, that is. Alrighty, so now I'm going to join to that top of just the chain three with a slip stitch and that's all the bigger I'm going to make this spider web and then I'm going to put the trim on if you wanted to continue and make it bigger like this one each row you would add two more change chains for instance the first one we had four then six then eight then ten then twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen just making it as big as you want and you're always going to double crochet in the double crochet and then make your chains in between. That's how the pattern works. And so you can make a small applique like we're going to do today, or you can make a huge spider web like the one that's on the back of the wall there. And I'll show you again when we click over. Now to make the trim, <clears throat> you're going to stitch the amount of single crochets that you have in between. We're making the small one. We have a chain six here, so we're going to stitch six single crochets. Now, if we made it bigger and we had, I don't know, as big as 10 or 20 single crochets in be or chains, I'm sorry, in between, then that's the amount of single crochets that we would make. One, two, three, four, five. I need to do one more. We're gonna go in the top of this double crochet and stitch a single crochet. And now we're going to do what's called a peacot or pico stitch, depending on who you talk to. It depends on how you pronounce it. But it makes a nice little bump. So we're going to chain three. We're going to slip stitch in the top of the single crochet. And then we'll go right to that next set of chain or um, single crocheting six. A little string there. All righty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, we're in the top of that double crochet and we'll stitch a single crochet and that pico or peacot stitch, however you want to say it, chain three, slip stitch in the top of the single crochet. And again, single crocheting six. Alrighty, now we're to the next one. And that's the way we'll do it all the way around. Two, three, four, five, and six. Alrighty, now I'm going to do the single crochet and that pico or peacock stitch however that you want to say it there we go and six whoops get in there <laughs> I, I enjoy doing these live demonstrations just because they're fun. And, but also, I like for you all to see that I'm just as, uh, you know, everyday normal as you are. And um, I want you to understand that I make mistakes too. Sometimes I misspeak and call a single crochet a double crochet or, or a, you know, a chain a change. <laughs> You know, I, I don't mind showing my, my real self to you. I guess that's what I'm saying. 
because I just want to be real. One, two, three, the picot stitch, and that's the last one. And so we've gone all the way around, and how we join and tie off is we go right to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and clip that off. And I'm just going to pull that to the back and um, weave that in just a little bit later. You can take your needle and weave those in. Now, when you put your spider on, which is so much fun, all you do is, because these are little rings, right? All you do is just, I like to poke it through the center like that, but you can put them anywhere. And then I go to the back and I sort of, sort of squeeze them just a little, make them stay put. And you can put a couple of stitches on there if you're worried about it coming off, but I'm using these for decoration. And so um, I, I think they're gonna stay just fine. And like that one spot that's messed up, I'll put the spider over it like that and you can't see it, right? <laughs> well, that's how easy it is to make a spider web. And like I said, whoops, <laughs> if you wanna make it bigger, you just increase by two chains, every row all the way around, and you can make your spider web bigger and bigger. And I love using those um, colorful spiders because they're not as scary. You know, I um, even when you, like I put them on this black one, I put that bright green one. To me, it's just cute. It's not scary. Now see that spider web there up behind me? That one is made out of the Thick and Quick. I want to say Lion Brand. I can't remember who makes Thick and Quick all of a sudden. But anyway, it, it was just a leftover amount that I had. And so I made it big and I'm going to hang it in my window. <laughs> I think it'll be fun, you know? All right. Now, Nana uh, from Nana's Crafts. That's D Donna Whit Whit Whiting or Whitting, however. Her, her calendar came back to me, and I have to tell you, I'm going to apologize on public camera. I didn't put the word Elm in there. It had, I think it said E-M. And then I, instead of it saying, um, oh, I can't remember how the address was, but it was my fault. And so her calendar went out this morning. <laughs> I got it back in the mail yesterday. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I resent it out today and you're going to get it this week. Now you need to let me know when you get it. Okay. Oh, I just, I, you know, I go on and on about how UPS doesn't ever lose anything. And then I, I put the address in wrong. <laughs> All right. Oh, Susie says Hopium is becoming very popular. I really love their yarns. They have so many that are similar to what we have. And then a lot of really cool things that are different. And I, you know me, I like to try all kinds of new and different things. And I'm going through um, the comments right now. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to say hello to everyone. Susie and Lori and Heather and Leslie and Kimberly and um, Donna and let's see. Tammy, Crystal, Aurora, Liz. Crystal, Stacy, Vicky, Patty. I'm trying to get back through them all. After it goes down a ways, it doesn't let me go back anymore. So anyway, be looking for a couple of new patterns, at least three, with that Hobium yarn. So that's going to be fun. And of course, if you don't use that yarn, as long as you have the same hook and the same yarn weight, you can make that pattern. And that's something I try to stress with you all all the time is that you don't have to use the same color or the same yarn that the pattern designer has uh, has said. The main thing is that you use the same hook and the same weight yarn. And another thing is, you know, I tend to crochet loosely. I, I always have. It's kind of a weird thing because I say this all the time. I knit tight and I crochet loose. I don't know why. But that's how my tension has always been. And so when you're working a pattern, and because I get this all the time, it turned out too big or it turned out too small. Your gauge is off. They tell me that all the time. And I always say, you know, I, I, every crocheter crochets differently. And so you need to make, if you, if you made it and it's off, you can make a gauge swatch to check your gauge. But the most important thing to keep you from getting frustrated, you all know what I'm going to say measure as you go. And it's the same thing with my new dog sweater pattern. And I wanted to have Rosie up here 
um, modeling, but both of my dogs, for some reason, they're not feeling too good today. They were out there eating grass this morning, and they're both laying down. So I think the, the weather's uh, kind of affecting them. But the pattern that I put out yesterday was my new dog sweater pattern. And it, this is Maximo's. You can see it's just a basic dog sweater pattern. Super easy. And the, I wanted to do this. Um, here's Rosie's. I wanted to do this because it's getting cold. The 1st of October, we think about um, getting cold. and But also, I wanted there to be just a basic dog sweater pattern that you can make for your dog. And the pattern is set up in four sizes. But I also give you instructions on how to make it bigger. Because the main thing is to measure. Because not every dog that weighs, you know, five pounds is shaped the same. And it's like another thing I always say is dogs' bodies are so weird because they're they're backwards from us. <laughs> you know, they are. They're, they're just shaped weird. And so the key to that is to um, <coughs> thanks Susie for putting the website there. Um, the key to making a dog sweater that's going to fit is to measure as you go. And because I mean, just think about it. If you're making a dog sweater for a five pound chihuahua, that's going to be different than a five pound dachshund who's very long or a five pound, say, miniature um, pug because they're going to be short, but they're also going to be rounder in the middle. So make sure you measure as you go. It's a free crochet pattern on my blog and I did the video yesterday. And just so you understand, it took me about mm, three days. <laughs> to get that video ready because I go over and over and over the pattern and then I and then the testers come back and go I think you could word this a different way or maybe you could put some more information here and so it does take a really long time there's lots of pattern editing there's lots of picture editing lots of video editing before it's actually ready to go out there and the other thing is we're not perfect so if you do find something that doesn't fit right or work right you know, let us know and we'll take a look at it. I always, when someone says, uh, you know, this didn't work or this, this counts are off or I'm getting a different number than you or something like that, I always just shoot it back over to my testers, have them take a look at it. But remember, if you've gone to the, to the website before, it's going to bring up the old, because your computer or your, or your laptop remembers where you've been. <laughs> And it's going to bring up the old one. So make sure that you, when you go in to my uh, blog, like say through Ravelry or something, that you refresh your screen. Because if, and it's not just me, it's all the designers are constantly adding new patterns and new notes and new things to their patterns that are free on their blogs. And a lot of times I like to add new pictures if I get a new yarn and I might use, I might make that particular pattern out of a new yarn as a gift. And so I'll take some pictures and I'll add new pictures to the pattern on the blog. And so always be sure to refresh your screen, okay? Oh, Lori says the glow in the dark yarn. Do you know I have some? I'm gonna have to pull that out. That would be amazing on my front porch, wouldn't it? <laughs> I've got two skeins that I bought, I'm gonna say two years ago, because I wanted it so bad and I, I paid too much for it. And I want it so bad, and then I didn't get a chance to use it. Thank you for reminding me, Lori. <laughs> oh, Nana says she's making one for her dog right now in hot pink. Woo! I love hot pink. All righty. So, the other patterns that we did this week, if you look behind me there, there's that cowl. And that's with the Red Hearts new, uh, uh, here it is. I'm like, where did I put it? Uh, pooling striping yarn. And it's a really neat yarn because the way that it's set up, I've got this pulled out so I can show you. The way the yarn is set up is all of the color stripes are even. I'm not pulling that even. There we go. And I believe they said 12 inches. I can't remember exactly. And so they work up really neat for color pooling. And if you want to learn how to color pool the traditional way, on the Red Heart website, Marley Bird has put some really good videos together and some different ways and things that you can use the striping or the pooling yarn. And she's using the Red Heart pooling. Well, they sent me this color and I played around with it a little bit and I really like color pooling. 
but I thought I want to do something just a little bit different. And so I have a pattern out there. It's called front post, uh, easy front post cow. <clears throat> and I did it with the black and I can't remember the name of it, but it's got like really bright colors and black and that makes the bright colors just stand right out. And I love the pattern. And so I thought, well, I want to try it. And because you're, you're crocheting in the round, even though you're joining, you're still crocheting around. And so as I was doing this cowl, oh my goodness, it turned out so gorgeous. And so I went ahead and did the video on it um, with the same pattern, but with the striping yarn. And so, and I get a lot of questions. Do you have to do it in the round for this particular wave pattern? Yes, you must do it in the round. Now, I decided to make a matching headband, and I did it just a little bit shorter. And check that out. Isn't that cool? It came out as kind of a slanted stripe. It's done exactly like the cowl. I just did 68 foundation double crochets, and instead of the, I don't know if it's 72 or 74 because I don't have the pattern with me, but instead of that mount, because I wanted it just to fit over my head, and I love the way that it turned out. And I put the notes for this on the blog as well, so that if you want to make a headband to match your cow, you certainly can. <laughs> Alrighty, I know we're talking about a lot today and I'm having a little bit of trouble keeping up with the comments. So anyway, the new cupcake yarn. I'm not sure, is that the Lion brand? I think I've, I think I have seen, I've got some other new yarns that I'm going to show you next week that I picked up. And so <clears throat> I don't know if that's in my pile or not. Unfortunately, I've got a pile over here of yarn that I'm going to be showing you, but I don't want to show it all in one day because I don't want to overwhelm you. <laughs> this is the time of year when all of the crochet or all of the yarn companies try to push out their new yarn. First of, of September, they start. First of October, it's just booming because really the first of October, is hat season, it's scarf season, it's cow season, it's sweaters and, and ponchos. And so I've got a whole bunch of fun stuff planned. I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm redoing and I've got a bunch of stuff that's new. <clears throat> I'm talking too much, aren't I? <laughs> All righty. So the other thing that we did this week is The baskets. I absolutely love working with the new t-shirt yarn. It's not new, it's t-shirt yarn. And I, someone was asking me where you can get it. Of course, I got this online that, you know, I ordered online when they had the big dollar sale, but I went out and decided to see if I could find some in the stores. Okay. Now my Walmart had some, <clears throat> but it wasn't with the yarn. It was around the corner by the buttons and it was in like a, um, a cardboard tray. And they were $4.97. It was not this brand, but it was uh, similar and it was nice. Okay, so then I went to Hobby Lobby and I didn't find any t-shirt yarn there. Okay, um, Joann's has some and a couple of different brands actually. And they do have this brand, which is the Fettuccine. And um, Michael's. Did I tell you I went to Michael's? I didn't find any at Michael's. So, um, your best bet <clears throat> and a lot of fun is to make it. And I did, I have a blog that I did, oh my goodness, five or seven years ago before we even moved out here to Colorado. It's done in, in Oklahoma, um, there, and it's super easy to do. And, um, and the way that I show you how to do it, you, you use your old t-shirts or your old, anything made out of old t-shirt fabric. And I show you how to cut it so you don't have to tie it. And then you pull it and it makes just a nice t-shirt yarn. And I really encourage you to try it rather than throwing away your old t-shirts, even if they're stained a little bit, as long as you put them through the wash and it's something that you can do. And I'm going to try this. I haven't, I haven't done this lately, but I, I, I've done this in the past. When you're making t-shirt yarn from dark colored shirts like navy or black, or any bright color, orange, whatever, and you've got a few stains on it, splash a little bleach in there when you're washing it. Don't put it everywhere, just splash a little. 
and then run it through on cold water. And it comes out with this amazing mottled look, mottled look. It's really, really cool. And then cut it into t-shirt yarn and you get this really neat sort of variegated fun yarn. I'm going to have to try this again. I haven't done it in a really, really long time. And so maybe if I, uh, I've got so many things planned, <laughs> but maybe if I, I uh, can fit it in, I'll do another, I'll do a video of it so you can see. But if you go to the blog, it's just how to make tarn, how to make t-shirt yarn on my Posh Pooch Designs page. And also at the top of the blog, there's a tab that says crafts. I believe it's underneath there also. Just click that tab and it shows you all the different kinds of crafts that, that I've got blogs on that aren't um, crochet or knitting. But anyway, it's a really, really whole lot of fun. And it's a great way to reuse your t-shirts. Now you can, you, you can do this with any kind of fabric, but the t-shirt works so good because when you cut it, you give it like this pull and it kind of rolls in on itself and it really does make a neat yarn that you can work with. <clears throat> and it makes these really neat, sturdy bags. And yeah, I've got yarn balls in here, but this is so sturdy. You could use this for makeup. You could, um, and the other thing it, that you can use this for is a traveling yarn bag, another or yarn bowl. In other words, you can set this on the tray in the on the in the plane or on the dashboard of your car, and your balls of yarn aren't going to roll around. And then if you want to put it away, you can just fold it up and stick it in your yarn bag. And that's what I'm going to use mine for. <laughs> well, some of them. I'm planning on making a bunch more. But anyway, that's a video we did. I can't even remember what day of the week it was last week. So I hope you'll go in and find that one. That'll be a lot of fun. And um, I also, on that video, underneath it on YouTube, there is a link to sh that you can follow to take you to where how I made my own uh, t-shirt yarn. And it's just, I think you should try it. It'd be so much fun, you know. Nana says, I have to drive an hour and 40 minutes to, jo to Augusta, Georgia to get all oh, yarn at Walmart. You know, you ought to try ordering it from Hobie and because they were so fast. As a matter of fact, we started talking about this, I'm not even going to say a week and a half ago. And then, all of, and then I got a notice that said, I have a DHL delivery on October 1st, which was yesterday. And I was like, I'm so excited. I can't wait. And then my husband's like, you can't look in there. <laughs> So I am really excited to get busy with that yarn. Uh, I've got some neat things I want to do, but those two yarns with the sparkle, those two cakes, I am going to make a wrap shawl out of that. Those are gorgeous colors, and I think it'd be perfect for a New Year's Eve party with those sparkle. Let me grab it again. <clears throat> it's got like gold and silver and cream sparkles. Is that not the most gorgeous yarn you've ever seen? And it's got a lot on here. I know, I said I was getting ready to go, but I want to see how much yarn is on here so I can tell you. And I love that it's got a center pull tab. Now that is something amazing. <laughs> All righty, let's see. Uh, color, let's see. Maiden Turkey. Car, car Topu, is that how you say that? I don't know. Okay, oh, here it is. It's got 200 grams. So I'm excited. They sent me two of these same ones. Oh, I'm so excited to get started on that. So gorgeous. Now, remember, the weight of this is the same as Mandela. And so um, even if you don't have this yarn, you can make it in the Mandela yarn or any yarn that's a three. All righty. And that's everything for today. What a busy, busy day, huh? All righty. Amanda says she wishes she had my yarn collection. Just so that you understand, the reason that I have so much yarn is that I have to, I have to buy so much a month so I can write it off. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I do love yarn, and it probably is an addiction, but it, but it's not like it's wasted. Because I get to make beautiful gifts for people and myself, and, and it's just fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so let me leave you with this quote today. Encourage, lift, and strengthen one another. <laughs>